Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on our surfacing mastery series, and we're going to talk about trimming and blending surfaces. Now, this is a question that came in quite a while ago, and I just haven't had time to get to it. So, in the description of this video, you can download this data set, and this is just a form body that I threw together that's roughly like an airplane fuselage and sort of an intake for the jet engine. And the question here is that came in from the user is how do we sort of trim and blend these two together? So the way that this works is we're going to be trimming out the bottom of the fuselage and we're going to be blending this back together. So it's a tricky subject and of course it's different for every model that you're dealing with. So we're going to get into this. Um, and again, full disclosure on most of these things, I do them live while going through the process. So uh, I haven't pre-modeled this. If there's problems along the way, these are what you generally will run into as we get through it. Um, I also want to take a quick moment to mention a lot of people have asked about supporting the channel and Patreon or, or buy me a coffee and those sorts of things. We don't have any donation type of platform set up, but we do now have a merch store available and you can see products listed at the bottom of the video. Uh, of course, there's some common stuff in here like mugs and t-shirts and stickers, things that you would see on, on most places. But we do also have a couple of desk mats that are specific for Fusion 360. So these have things like shortcuts and you can find common shortcuts that I use all the time on the top left. And then there are shortcuts across the bottom for all of the various workspaces. So if you're looking to get a new desk mat or find a way to support the channel, then definitely check out the merch store. We will be adding some more products here. We're gonna to try to make sure that anything that we add is going to be something that's useful or helpful. But of course, again, we do have standard stuff like t-shirts and stickers and mugs, things that, that you would find across the board. Uh, so definitely check that out if you're looking for something like a desk mat or looking for ways to support the channel. Anything that you do certainly does help out. But uh, now back into the video, what we're going to be doing again is working with surfaces. So if you want to follow along, go ahead and download this from the data set description. And if you don't, just go ahead and watch along and, and follow the process. So when I approach a problem like this, when somebody asks me about blending surfaces together, especially when they're more organic shapes like this, they're not prismatic, you can kind of get an idea for where they sort of intersect. The first thing that I would do is start to figure out where I want them to meet together. So the way that we're going to do this sort of intake runner here is we're going to blend it all the way to the back. Now, there are a couple of different approaches, and I'll mention a couple of them here. So if you're working on a specific model and this doesn't work for you, then by all means, you can sort of work, you know, work with the rest of these. But there are a couple of things that I generally do. Now, the first thing that I would do is sort of look for the easiest solution. Now, the easiest solution for me is to do a loft, and I'm gonna go from this shape to this shape. Now, I'm gonna to have to go all the way around the back here, making a closed profile. And then at the profile edge one, I want to make sure that I either have curvature, continuity, or tangency. Now, if you don't know the difference between these, I've talked about it in several other videos, but just a quick rundown. G2, or curvature continuity, is looking at the direction of curvature for the shape, but also the radius of curvature. So if you think about things like a fillet on a sharp corner, those have tangency or G1 continuity, because they don't really care what's going on before or after, they're a consistent radius through. But when you use G2 continuity, basically what you're doing is taking that radius of curvature. So you can play around switching back and forth. In some cases, especially when we've got a big broad curve like this, you're probably not gonna notice a difference. What we can see at the back here is that if I say tangency or curvature continuity, it completely flips around. Now, the reason for this is because by default, Fusion wants to take the selected edge and go out and sort of carry that surface, continue it on. So what we need to do in this case is simply change the tangency weight to a negative one. Now, in some cases, depending on your selection, if you're working with, uh, let's say, a solid loft, for example, or if you're selecting a uh, sort of a closed edge, sometimes you will see an option down here to toggle and flip the direction. Now, that's usually preferable, but I will say that a lot of times adding a negative tangency weight is more stable for updates for whatever reason, whereas the option to toggle to flip the direction, sometimes that gets messed up when you're changing surfaces or changing inputs. 
So this is the first way that I would do this. And this is honestly going to be the best and easiest approach. So we're going to come back to that surface and, and we'll be using that for our final, but that's sort of the easiest approach. Now let's take a harder approach. Now the harder approach would be to start doing things like patching surfaces. Now I'm going to repeat that process. I'm going to patch this one here. And the reason for this is because now we've got this sort of closed volume where we can trim away the inside of the fuselage. So what we want to do is I'm going to take this body here and I'm going to copy and paste it. So I've got an extra one here that I can work with because again, I want to sort of preserve this original and I'll do the same thing for this, this body here. Uh, so those first three, that's going to be the, the best approach, but this is probably what you're going to end up doing if things don't work for you. Uh, now, one problem that you'll run into is once you start stitching all of these things together, what we actually are going to end up with is a solid body. Uh, so as soon as I hit OK, we now have a solid body because it's closed. We can still work with it, uh, but one thing that we might want to do is patch the back of this one and turn that one into a solid as well. So if we stitch these together, and again, this doesn't always work, but sometimes you can stitch things together. Now we've got two solid bodies, and what we can do is we can join them together. Now, if we join them together, which is using solid and combine, we can just make this one piece, go back to our surface tools. And then if we select this face, select this face and select that one and just hit delete. Now what we've done is we've sort of given ourselves a shortcut to patch these things together. And then now we can work on this back section. Now, why did I go through all that to join them together and stitch them and sort of do that? Well, really what I wanted was a good intersection here. Now you can get this a couple of other ways. You can do things like split face. This is a good tool. Sometimes you can get away with using trim and extending that trim curve. That really depends on the geometry that you're working with. It wouldn't be a great option here. But really what I was looking to get is, is these two pieces together and this edge. Now the reason I want the edge is because I want to project that. So P on the keyboard, which I think everybody gets a good chuckle out of. And I'm gonna go ahead and project this one on the back here. And I'm gonna create a spline and just kind of decide where I want this to hit. I'm gonna just pick the midpoint and I'm gonna use curvature continuity, which again is that G2 continuity. And basically what I have done is created a curve that I can split the face with. So I'm gonna grab this face here, grab the one on the other side and simply use this curve. And what this gives me is faces that I can get rid of. Now, the reason that's important is because now I have the option to build those new surfaces. You can't quite do it yet, but that's that's the, the target here. So I'm gonna do unstitch, turn off chain selection, and I'm gonna grab both of these sides over here. And what this does is it separates those surfaces from the rest of the surface body. Now this one here is still connected, so I probably want to select it as well. Uh, so that'll give me sort of this bottom piece as its own. I can stitch them back together. Uh, Keen Eye might be thinking, we're adding a ton of features to the timeline, and that's true. Uh, oftentimes when we get into these types of surface modifications, you really have to take more of a direct modeling approach. And what I mean by that is you can't really concern yourself as much with the timeline because sometimes it just isn't going to work. So now we're going to loft from front to back. Now we've got these guides. So we can use that as a guide and we can use this as a guide. Now it looks like this profile here, I maybe missed a selection. So I just need to make sure I grab it. And then at the front, we're gonna use tangency or curvature continuity, again, depending on your geometry. On the back, if we want to drive tangency, we can. And then on the edges, I'm not really gonna worry about blending. Now, the main reason for that is because I don't have a smooth transition here. But this is the approach that we would take. Then we would get rid of extra pieces, stitch everything together, and start blending. Well, you know, so, that's probably not the cleanest approach, but that at least gives you an idea of stitching things together, building solids, removing geometry, and then working with it as surfaces again. Um, again, as I mentioned, not the ideal approach. 
In this case, I would certainly go this direction with the loft. Now, in order to make this work, we need to start stitching things together. Now, this means that we've got the bottom and the top portions of the fuselage as individual bodies. So what we see here, let's go ahead and hide everything and bring, bring them back one at a time. You can see what this ended up doing is putting them all together. That's not what we want. We want these to be individual bodies. And you can see that we've got sort of each of these pieces here. So make sure that we're stitching the right things together. Those two will go together. And then now we can do some trimming. Oh, trimming is a little bit tricky in this case. So I would say if you're working on geometry like this, you would want to patch the front of it, not turn it into a solid, but patch the front of it. So that way we can do split body or trim. Uh, so first trim tool will be this. The selection is going to be kind of tough because I can't actually select inside that body. So I'm going to have to hold down the left mouse button and see if I can grab that inside face right there and say, okay. Now, if I hide this piece, we should see that the bottom was cut away. So you can see that. Now we're gonna repeat the process. This is usually where complex surfacing tends to fall apart, but we're gonna try it anyways. Uh, so now what we wanna do is use this as our trim tool and remove this inside portion. But you can see what's happening is the selection process is not working very well. And the, the reason for this is because we've removed the overlap between the two. So this trim tool isn't actually intersecting what we want. So you can see sometimes we get this like double selection. Now if this happens, what I usually do is again, I hold down the left mouse button and I wait for this selection to, to pop up and see if I can grab that individual face and get it to go away. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You just kind of have to play around with these selections and see if you can get it to work. So that looks like it works. And we'll stitch these two together. And now we have this single interface. Because we blended them to tangency at the back, this edge could potentially cause some problems when blending. Sometimes you'll find that a fillet will work. Uh, let's go ahead and just add a fillet. You can see that it does blend there. If I try to increase this to a larger number, it blends a lot bigger on the front and it tapers away to zero. That's not always the case. If that doesn't work for you, then generally what the approach is, is to take that section where they intersect and trim them away and loft between them or blend between them in some way. Most of the time, if you are careful with your inputs, driving tangency off the back, driving tangency here or curvature continuity, then you will be able to just do things like apply fillets if you want. Last tip here, and then we'll end this video. The fillet command does also have curvature continuous options. They don't always work on complex surfaces though, um, especially ones that fade away to zero. So if you find that you're having trouble with tangency or blending or things like that, probably because you need to use a tangency option and not the curvature option. And that's really when you end up with something where we've got tangency or a curvature continuous edge at the back and that goes away, that's where those things tend to fail. But you do have the option to play around with those, see if they can work for you. And if you wanna open this back up in surfacing, all we need to do is select it and delete it. And now I've got that open intake duct, can go back to the turbine and you can continue detailing your model. So if you have any questions on this, please let me know. If you do have a, you know, a question that you want answered or you want some help with, you can always send me an email, support at caducator.com. Um, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to get to everybody. This question has kind of been sitting in my inbox for quite a while, unfortunately. But if I can make a video out of it, I will. Um, if I can't, I will do my best to try to answer your questions through email. But please feel free to send them over. I'm happy to try to answer them for you if I can. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.